Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the effect of the ocean floor on sonar detection. And uh, to do this, what we've done is set up a relatively simple scenario. We have a pair of kilo classes here of we have one basically chilling right there on the ocean floor, and we have another one that even though it doesn't look like he's actually about 20 feet over the ocean floor. The third kilo, of course, that we set up is way, way, way out here where you can see the shelf kind of drops off here. He's chilling at 200 feet, about 33 fathoms there in order to kind of prove my points. So let's go ahead and uh, open the sucker up real quick. I've got my uh, couple Constellation frigates here. These are absolutely fantastic anti-submarine platforms. They really do everything great. They're very modern vessels, based on the friend, by the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unpause, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up time here. And we're gonna look, we're gonna look. Nope, and my ding, 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 ding. And we're gonna go right over the top of where those Kilo class uh, submarines are. And now if I go all the way out to sea, you'll observe that this one indeed also choo-choo right past our Kilo class submarines. Now you're sitting there going, what? That doesn't make sense. I mean, it was there, wasn't it? You should be able to detect it with one of the world's best sonar platforms. Yeah, but the Kilo class is an electric sub, a diesel electric sub, and it makes no sound when it's not moving. Oh. <laughs> so as we can see, um, it makes no difference as far as passive goes. So um, we'll tweak things just a tiny bit here, just to sort of make my point here. Let's grab our two subs here, and I'm going to go ahead and order them to start moving here. And we're going to keep them relatively slow here. We're going to set them to a creep speed. I'm a creep, kind of a thing like that. And let's go grab our other one here. We'll also order him up to creep speed, and we'll basically order him to go straight here. Uh, just like that. Double check to make sure I press creep correctly. Now, one of these subs, of course, the one that's closest to us is going to be the one that is going to basically be chilling just over it. The other one's basically going to be grinding his bow on the, you know, uh, under ocean floor, basically, below him. But, um, see what happens as far as detection this time. Pause. Now, the first thing you'll observe is we instantaneously picked up this guy. Uh, as soon as he started turning his propeller, we detected him immediately. And the reason for that, of course, is we're using a different sensor because we're so deep. We're using basically our toad array, which is very sensitive. This guy can't use his toad array sonar because he's too darn close to the actual shore here. It would drag basically across the ocean and you'd snap it off when it gets caught on a rock. So keep in mind uh, the differences between the two. Uh, in order to make this more fair, one of the things we have to actually do is I'll drop this contact here. I'm going to click on this boy. Okay, my friend, you're very, very, very good at what you do. So um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to rip off your toad array sonar and that's the only way to make it slightly more fair uh, otherwise like i said it's uh, basically it, it's it's rigged it's rigged because uh, you'll never detect him ah he picks him up anyway so as we can see here if i click on him we still had no problem picking him up with the captus there that's our vas our vds rather so meanwhile our guy close to the shore oh there they are finally detects these two we blitz by them but the chances are the detection range was two or three nautical miles which is Nothing. Uh, that's within, basically, if he wanted to spear you, or like a you know a giant whale kind of a thing, he'd be able to hit you at that distance. So passively, that makes a massive, massive difference as far as detectability. When you're close to this big, nasty, uh, soft bottom ocean floor here, it reflects sound, it absorbs sounds, there's biological sounds, there's rain, there's wave noise, so much noise going on here. And when you're so close to the surface, it actually makes it tricky. Now, one of the interesting things that we don't know that we do simulate or don't simulate in command is the fact that when you actually operate close to a hard surface on underwater you actually make yourself louder because the sub interacts the hull basically reflects off of the uh, bottom of the ocean and reflects back and forth it makes things louder so uh, that's one of those neat little effects that i'm not sure if they model that but i think it's cool either way but now what we're going to do is take a look at active sonar now this is where you're going to go oh so what I'm going to do is come in here. I'm going to go ahead and activate the Captus. Um, the reason I like this one is because, again, remember, this guy can use his toad array. We can't use our toad array all the way out here. That's just not fair. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip this one on as well. I'll turn on the Captus only. And uh, one thing I'm going to do to this guy is uh, he's a little too close. I know you're sitting here going, what do you mean too close? He's four nautical miles away. Uh, there's no way that he's going to have that issue. Uh, the reality is we're going to have to move him a lot further away. So I'm actually going to bring him out to 30 nautical miles away. Now, keep in mind, he's... 30 nautical miles away, this chap over here, I'll go ahead and shut off God's eye view here, is uh, four nautical miles away. So you can get a really, really good idea of the differences in detectability here. So let's go ahead and unpause and uh, speed up time a little bit. You know, I like, was like how they call ASW, awfully slow warfare. It's so true, it's so true. Got him, nice. All right, we've made ourselves our first detection. I can tell you without even looking, this is the one that's basically 20 feet off the ocean floor here. We picked him up, and the range here looks like about three nautical miles, which is roughly what I expected. Oh, and we picked up the other one. I'm guessing about three nautical miles. Yeah, because uh, the basically the ocean floor is doing its thing here. 
This guy, on the other hand, we'll just kind of let time kind of uh, advance here. He's just sort of sitting here, pinging away, making more noise in the ocean. Ah, there it is. 26 nautical miles. Wow. So um, the most incredible thing about this particular uh, frigate here is I can detect an enemy sub at 26 nautical miles. It basically, they can't hit me with a torpedo back at this distance. This is like cheating. Now, the cool thing here, of course, is when we were closer to that nice little, um, basically the sea floor here, you could see my range was reduced pretty substantially. I think it was, what, 2.6? So let's uh, 2.6 divided by 26 points out, whatever it is. Uh, let's see, I get about 10% of the detection range when I am close to the shore. Now, that's kind of a neat thing here. That's actually really important tactically because when you're planning, I want to go ahead and go from here to here kind of a thing with my sub, that makes a massive, massive difference. Now, one of the things that you also probably find kind of fascinating here is does it work the other way around? So what I've done is I've reset our scenario here and uh, we're basically looking at it from the submarine's perspective. Now, keep in mind the two ships that are going to be checking these subs out are moving about five. Uh, that's, that's not very fast. That's pretty darn quiet for a surface vessel. I think it's something like 20 decibels, which that's nothing <laughs> as far as volumes go in the water. But uh, it does give you a pretty good idea, and you can see they're kind of sneaking up on us. So anyway, let's speed up time. Again, the Kilo is a pretty good sub. It has very, very sensitive hearing, if that makes sense. <laughs> I guess it does. So we'll go ahead and uh, speed up here. Wait for it. It's almost like my ship isn't moving. I'm pretty sure. No, he's making five knots. We're fine. So again, my ship is uh, basically cruising along. My kilos are just sort of chilling. Oh, what I probably should have done is I sent my kilos to be a little bit quicker here, but it'll do, it'll work. It'll work. It'll work. There we go. Pause. So one of the things I notice is the first one to detect uh, the incoming frigate here. By the way, look at how close this is. This is 2.1 nautical miles. This is knife range right here. Uh, this guy picks it up about two miles away, uh, which pretty darn close. Uh, that's that's about what I expected, actually. Now, if we that was, remember, the middle of the deep ocean here. Meanwhile, uh, what I want you to observe here is my constellation here is now about two nautical miles away from both of my kilos here. So let's go ahead and I'll let time kind of advance. Remember that sound is ricocheting all over the place. Some of it's getting observed, absorbed. Absorbed, yeah, was observed naturally uh, by the bottom here, kind of a thing like that. And it's it's struggling a little bit here. We still haven't picked up the... There it is! You'll observe that we picked up our target at less than a nautical mile away. So as you can see, sound is an interesting problem when you start getting a little bit closer to the seashore. Uh, once you get close to it, it affects all detection ranges, not just subsurface. It also affects surface. Uh, you get another interesting problem, too, that you can't use your fancy sensors like your TAS and your sonar and all that other fun stuff because of just the chaos that goes on over here. Now, in the middle of the deep ocean, one of the things you probably observed is even at the same depth, the detectability was almost 100% more like 10 times stronger. So it's really important when you're thinking, especially building a scenario or something if you want to think about these things tactically you are very safe as a submarine or basically anything acoustically whenever you're close to a shore but the moment you sneak out now there's one more thing i wanted to share real quickly and you probably noticed the fact that on my little scenario here uh, if you look at my weather settings i intentionally set the weather settings to create a little bit of ambient noise and uh, the reason i did that of course is because without that ambient noise you get a slightly different impression of uh, kind of the way sound travels obviously when it's windy the waves are louder obviously when it's raining the water is a lot louder and obviously you know if your sky is cloudy that has no impact on anything because there's not even a lot of daylight at this particular point so hopefully this is helpful as far as uh, kind of understanding that concept uh, the big thing is it actually gets even more complicated from the reading that i've done on the actual topic here and um i won't thank anybody today uh, we did orange team and blue team for the purposes of this demonstration one thing i do want to say real quick though is with a nuclear submarine, you can't actually stop making noise. Uh, your nuclear sub um, always makes noise. So this still applies to you, but it's not going to be as good as if you were a diesel. Enjoy.